Our Unilever Nigeria says it will seek shareholders' approval next month to raise 63 billion naira through rights issues. The household products maker also says it will seek approval to increase its authorized share capital to 5 billion naira by creating an additional 3.95 billion new ordinary shares of 50 cobo each. Let's talk more about this with the consumer goods sector analyst and the head of Research West Africa at Exotics Partners, Esili Ewe. Good afternoon, Esili. Thank you very much for joining us. We can see the rains in Lagos. Thank you, Jimmy. Right, you are seeking to raise um, 63 billion naira through right issues. Why do you think this is coming at this time, despite the impressive 2016 earnings posted by the company? Well, well frankly, I, I do think that there is a bit of reaction here coming from uh, Kraft's uh, recent offer to buy the parent company. It's possible that the parent company has decided to uh, accelerate uh, initiatives in some of the local businesses in a bid to to significantly increase, increase group earnings. Uh, but that's obviously on the side. Uh, I think that from a market perspective, this has come as a bit of a shock, uh, given that you know from our point of view, there's no we don't see an immediate need for for further capital. Uh, the company has in this notice indicated that uh, they would like to use some of the the monies that were raised from the parent company to to basically subscribe uh, to, to this rights offer. But that's a mere fraction of the proposed amount they're looking to raise. So uh, I'm inclined to think that we're looking at something pretty big here. There could be a you know a possible acquisition in the offering uh, as a way to quickly scale up uh, uh, the Union Dreamers local business. Now, what would this mean for the parent company in terms of increasing its stake in the subsidiary? Well, this has always been a long um, interest of the parent company. They, in 2014, uh, wanted to increase their stake in the business, but when successful at doing that, uh, they only managed to raise, uh, I believe, in the neighborhood of about 5% uh, uh, of the company additional. Uh, so I think that this would clearly allow them to raise more in the context of an environment where uh, you're likely to, to see sufficient minority support uh, Rights. And do you see this rights issues being oversubscribed? Well, I think in the context of uh, potential interest from the parent company, I, I, I certainly think so. And you think by the time the shareholders meet, uh, that's, that should be next month in May, they're going to approve of this um, right issues? Well, I think that could be really tricky because then management needs to obviously present a strong case for uh, for 65 so 63 billion dollar raise that as i pointed out is a significant capital raise that's just about roughly 200 million dollars um, we haven't seen that kind of equity capital raise uh, in, in in consumers in a while so um, i'm not sure it's something that uh, uh, shareholders would warm up to at least minorities that uh, would be willing to warm up to just a big fee but i think that all right, thank you very much, um, Sili, for your time. That was Sili Ebe, head of research, uh, West Africa at Exotics um, Partners. And Nigeria's headline inflation moderates by 0.52% to 17.26% in March from 17.78% recorded in February. Data from the Statistics Office released today shows this is the second consecutive month of decline in inflation on a year-on-year -year basis. The MBS explains that this represents the positive effects of stabilizing prices in already high food and non-food prices as well as favorable base effects over 2016 price levels. It also shows early effects of a stronger naira at the foreign exchange market since March. Food inflation declined to 18.44% last month from 18.53% in February year-on-year. Year. Now, urban inflation stood at 18.72% year-on-year, while rural inflation stood at 16.47%. And for more on the inflation numbers and the domestic commodities market, I'm being joined by a research uh, analyst with financial derivatives company, Adim Okwesa. Good afternoon, Adim. Thank you very much for joining us. Good afternoon, Chimis. Thank you. Now, the FDC think tank had forecast a decline in the headline inflation rate to 16.4%. That's in March. But we are seeing 17.26%. Were you surprised at this latest number released today by the MBS? 
yes, indeed, I was surprised. We got the magnitude wrong, but I think the most important thing is the trajectory, which we got spot on. The truth is that economic models are based on assumptions, and most of, more often than not, these assumptions don't always hold. I think the most important thing is the trajectory, which we got spot on, and which shows that inflationary pressures are easing. Now, do you think the CBN's aggressive intervention in the <coughs> interbank market played a role in the increase, uh, rather, the de uh, decline in the inflation uh, rate? Yes, definitely. I think it certainly played a, a role in the decline. I think in the month of March, the CBN injected at least 250 million every week in the market. What this did is that it drove, it boosted forex liquidity and which in turn drove down the cost of imports. Circa the policy, traders and manufacturers might have had to source forex at the parallel market at 500 naira and above, but now they can get that less than 380 naira. 889 is a dollar. But like the report said, the inflation rate, the decline in the inflation rate only reflects the early effects of the new policy. Why? Because I think there's a 90 day lag between when a policy is implemented and when it is fully felt in the economy. So I think in the coming months, we should see a more profound impact of the, of the CBN's policy on the inflation number. All right. Now, is the consecutive increase in month-on-month -month inflation a cause for concern? Um, it is worrying, but I don't think policymakers will lose sleep about about the rise in month-on-month -month inflation. I think month-on-month -month, the right reason why month-on-month -month inflation rose is because of seasonalities. We are in the planting season, and because of that, some some key commodities are. Supply of some key commodities are constrained. I think the harvest season begins in May and June, and we should then see food month and month inflation decline, and food inflation also decline, also decline significantly. I think to buttress my point, I think the core inflation, which is the inflationary trend, less seasonalities and anomalies, declined for a fourth consecutive month. So I think in the in the coming months, we should see more than more depletion decline. All right. Thank you very much um, for your time, Adim Okwesa, research analyst with Financial Derivatives Company here in Lagos. And that's it on the program. Thank you very much for being part of it. I'm Chimezi Obi.